the lord granted him a stern struggle that he might know that wisdom is mightier than all else in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit Good afternoon my dear brothers and sisters welcome to this holy eucharistic celebration today the mother church keeps the festival of john the brito you know john brito although he was born in foreign land he came to india he lived in tamil nadu at the place called madurai and he proclaimed the word of god offering himself to the lord and he even died as a martyr that is what is the spirit of the people and the martyrs and the saints when they work for the lord but do we have that spirit bearing the name of christ as christians as we partake in this holy eucharistic celebration let us ask god's pardon and mercy for all the moments where we have taken the mercy and the love of god for granted i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting amen kire Almighty and merciful God who brought your martyr blessed John the Brito to overcome to the torments of his passion grant that we who celebrate the day of his triumph may remain invincible under your protection against the snares of the enemy through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians chapter 9 verses 19 to 27 Brethren though I am free from all I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews To those under the law I became as one under the law 
though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord. Your response. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Summon forth your might, O God, your might, O God, which you have shown for us. From your temple, high in Jerusalem, kings will come to you bringing their tribute. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. You, kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Praise the Lord who rides on the heavens, the ancient heavens. Behold, he thunders his voice, his mighty voice. Come, acknowledge the power of God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. His glory is on Israel. His might is in the skies. Awesome is God in his holy place. He is God, the God of Israel. He himself gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you, O God. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord chapter 12 verses 22 32 at that time among those who went up to worship at the feast were some greeks these came to philip who was from bethsaida in galilee and asked him sir we wish to see jesus Philip went and told Andrew Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus and Jesus answered them the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified truly truly i say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains alone but if it dies it bears much fruit whoever loves his life loses it and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life if anyone serves me he must follow me and where i am there will my servant be also if anyone serves me the father will honor him now is my soul troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour 
But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come from your sake, not mine. Now it is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Carl Sandburg, a writer, says this, We need to create solitude. Or the world has to create solitude. In our own words, to understand this comment or this statement, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to rest a while. Or we need to create an opportunity, grab the opportunity to spend with the Lord. Today, through the liturgy of the word, we have observed that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it will not be fruitful. But in our endeavor to serve the Lord or to feed our families, we don't find time. Otherwise, we don't rest. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is inviting through the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. He sends an invitation, open invitation to his disciples who were uh, troubled, who became fatigued with the healing and teaching ministry. So at that time, as he sees his disciples being uh, coming towards him after their mission work, he tells them or invites them, come and rest a while. This is the invitation of the Lord. But we know, this, this, we, here we observe the concern of the Savior. They themselves did not ask Jesus that they were tired. He himself asked them, I see you all coming from the mission with the teaching and healing, you are all tired. Let us go to a deserted place where we can rest a while. This is the invitation, which means Jesus perceives, Jesus observes all our endeavors, all our, uh, all our uh, works. This is what I would like to uh, let you know. Here, my dear brothers and sisters, what is the background when he invites his disciples for, to a deserted place for a, for a rest? He is not only he is giving the invitation, not only to his disciples, there are also disciples of the John the Baptist. The, the, the disciples of the John the Baptist, they just buried their master, their guru, and coming to Jesus Christ. So he is giving invitation. Here we can find two types of hearts. The hearts that are troubled, the hearts that are tired. The hearts that are Trouble are the hearts of the disciples of John the Baptist. The hearts that are tired are the, uh, the disciples of Jesus himself. So he is giving this invitation to a deserted place for, to rest some time. He is for both of them. So my dear brothers and sisters, whatever we do, whatever uh, endeavors we take up, we need to rest. Rest is necessity created by the Lord. That's why even the whole world right now and in this uh, science, according to the science of the times, they need to uh, create the solitude. They need to create the time for themselves. But we, we, are, we all have time for everything, but not for ourselves and especially not for God. So when Jesus invites his disciples to a deserted place, it's not a simple a deserted place. Its meaning is to live in the presence of the Lord, to live with him. So they were without Jesus in the mission. Now he is inviting them to be with him in a deserted place. This is the concern of the Savior. 
Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to uh, invite you for the reflection or to understand the compassion of the Savior. We just uh, meditated the concern of Jesus. Now, I want you to uh, reflect with me the compassion of Jesus Christ. As I said, there are troubled hearts, there are tired hearts, and there are here other people who have no sheep no, who, who have no shepherd that's where jesus heart was moved for these people so when they went to the deserted place to rest for a while the multitude the crowds of the people were gathered knowing that jesus was heading towards heading there so there as he sees them he just he made a comment they are the like a people like the sheep who do not have the shepherd. This is the understanding of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, as a savior for all of us, he is with us who are deserted, he is with us who are troubled, he is with us who are tired in our day-to-day -day lives. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to understand the good, good the concept of good shepherd, or the fatigue in our ministry, we need to understand the life of Moses. According to the Jewish legends, there is a beautiful explanation how the Moses became wonderful leader for the people of Israel. We know that Moses was an outstanding shepherd. An outstanding shepherd. That's why he became very good shepherd for his people. So more than his leadership in leading the people of Israel, he was an outstanding shepherd when he led the sheep of his uncle, my dear brothers and sisters. To know how Moses led, we need to understand what I am going to explain to you. How did he lead his sheep? Otherwise, how did he lead his flock? Whenever he took the uh, flock to the pasture, first he used to lead young ones. He, he used to lead young ones to the first to the pastures so that they have tender and juicy grass for their food. Next, he used to relieve or lead the old animals or the sheep for the next where they find their herbs suitable for them. Finally, he used to leave or lead the vigorous ones, where they had to eat hard grass left. But it is provided for them and it is good for them. So, as he was leading first the young ones, next the old ones, later the vigorous ones. It seems according to the Jewish legends, the God of Yahweh observed how he was leading. So he said, he who understands, the one who understands the sheep, what to be given for each, he, all, he knows how to lead the people. This was the understanding of God of Yahweh. And there was also Another incident from Jewish legendary. Once a kid sheep or kid lamb escaped from the flock and it was stopping everywhere wherever it found some water and it was running towards the water and after some time it stopped. It stopped and it, is, it looked tired. Then Moses it seems he approached that small uh, kid, the lamb approached and told him you are weary, you are tired, I suppose, he said. And afterwards, beautiful incident happened. So far, Moses was observing. This particular lamb was running towards water, wherever it found it, continually running, jumping and running. And it got at one moment tired. It, cannot, it can no more walk, no more run. No more jump. At that time, Moses, it seems, he took that lamb over his shoulders and carried it. 
he carried it to tilly to to you know insert with the other flock carried it home then again god of have observed this and he said the one who can carry the people or the sheep the animals can carry the man he is treating these animals as a man of blood and body so this was the observation of yahweh and selected him over there so my dear brothers and sisters we need to give time to the lord when he invites all of us to the deserted place it, which means he wants all of us to be with him where we are prepared we are trained in the moments of our ministry we may be in our moments of our uh, call to live our christian life in the secular world we have to die sometimes we have to face lot of challenges we have to undergo lot of suffering but jesus says unless it falls into the earth it cannot be fruitful that's why in order to get that strength in order to be bold in order to be, be with the people in order to face all the challenges and suffering we need to be with the lord and rest with him that's why let us spend at least some time with the lord in our during during our lives and during our day to day lives where we get strength and vigor from the lord and we have strength to face the fa- to face the world so as we partake in this holy eucharistic celebration let us ask for a special grace where we are strengthened where our energy is rejuvenated god our loving father as we come together to your altar we pray for our pope our bishops the clergy in our day to day lives in our endeavor to witness your scripture we fall short we sometimes do not have the strength to face the world lord with your help be with us strengthen us mold us and lord as we heard through the liturgy of the word today unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth it cannot be fruitful lord teaches teaches to accept the suffering teaches to face the world and we also pray for our divyavani tv channel we pray for donors corpus fund donors special donors and the people who are rendering their services financially and prayerfully and today we also pray for the people who are offering this mass bless their intentions bless their family members and all their wishes and desires we make this prayer through christ our lord amen, amen. send your soul set our hearts our spirits free make us lord your own to your goodness God, we pray when our father labor and want to see the hearts which will serve pray my dear brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the loving father may the lord ask it for the sacrifice and your hearts for the praise and glory of his name for our good the good of all 
Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with the flame of your love, through which sin, John the Brito, overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your saint, martyr, John the Brito, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord of hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Paul Antin, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take Let away the see. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lord. you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive your sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I membrane you as if you were already there and unite myself to who wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. strength when I am weak. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it in eternity, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, John the Brito, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Just plan to embrace.